Hey everyone, this is Alex with the first episode of Alex Does Chemistry, a series where I talk about the ridiculous things that can happen when otherwise intelligent people decide to start fucking around with molecules. Today I'll be discussing the discovery and uses of nitrous cellulose, the wonder chemical that gave us World War I, exploding billiard balls, and that one scene from Inglorious Bastards. Nitrocellulose, also known as gun cotton, is the common name for cellulose which has been nitrated. Nitrocellulose, like many other nitrates, is pretty damn explosive. This is due to the tendency of sufficiently nitrated carbohydrates to spontaneously reassemble themselves into gases with low chemical energy and high kinetic energy. This property of nitrocellulose was demonstrated for the first time in 1846 by German-Swiss chemist Christian Friedrich Schönbein, who, in a classic example of the cavalier attitude that early chemists had towards safety, was working with concentrated nitric and sulfuric acids in the kitchen of his home in Basel when he carelessly spilled them on his kitchen table. Thinking fast, he sopped up the mess with his wife's cotton apron, then hung it on the stove to dry. When it was dry, the apron exploded. Realizing the obvious practical value of exploding aprons, he recorded his preparation method and worked with another chemist, Rudolf Christian Bircher, who had independently discovered a similar process the same year. A third chemist, F.J. Otto, had also figured out how to produce gun cotton that year, but was the first to publish his process and therefore lives on in the hearts and minds of all the world. Once nitrocellulose had been discovered, it was only a matter of time before some other chemist figured out how to use it to explode something other than aprons, and in 1884, a French chemist, Paul Vier, had come up with a formulation of nitrocellulose suitable for use as ammunition propellant. Vier's nitrocellulose-based smokeless, or white, powder had huge advantages over black powder as a propellant, such as a cleaner burn and more explosive power per unit volume. These advantages allowed indirectly for fast-firing, breech-loading artillery and semi-automatic small arms to be developed, which in turn made the massive mechanized scale of World War I a possibility. Of course, chemists were not content with purely military applications of this new compound, and in 1889 chemists working for Eastman Kodak figured out how to turn nitrocellulose into film base. Thus began the 72-year reign of nitrate film, a.k.a. celluloid, as a material of choice to place extremely close to intensely hot projection lamps in movie theaters. In 1869, an enterprising inventor named John Wesley Hyatt also used polymerized nitrocellulose as a replacement for ivory and billiard balls. Hyatt's balls enjoyed a brief run of popularity, but their tendency to explode on impact rendered that popularity short-lived. These days, nitrocellulose has mostly fallen out of favor for use in applications where people might be grievously injured as a result, though it's still used in the manufacture of ping-pong balls and guitar picks. So there you have it. Nitrocellulose. Total insanity.